This is the worst sound I've ever heard. Good morning everyone. So today I thought I'd do an ob guyan vlog. Show you guys how a typical ob guyan day is for me. A uh, lot, of, lot of interesting stories. I'm just gonna get into them in this vlog. We're just gonna hang around the labor and delivery, deliver any babies that come up, any C-sections that need to happen, we're gonna assist with. So that's the plan for today. Uh, we should be back home by maybe five or six. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it guys. So what's up guys, we are walking to the hospital and this is a frigid walk. So I'm gonna try my best to get the most footage I can to let you guys know what a typical day in the labor and delivery actually is like. Uh, so we're gonna be delivering babies. I'll start my day by rounding on patients, so I'm gonna check their charts. We're gonna round on them, check on how they're doing, see if there's any changes since yesterday. Um, do a little quick physical and then present that to my preceptor and then help deliver babies and assist in C-sections and stuff like that. So let's get right in there. Alright guys, so we are all changed. We are ready to go. So guys, I have my cap on because, this is just that cap right there. Uh, I have my cap on because we're back here near the OR, which is right there behind me, and uh, just coming in for my morning scrub. So there are a couple cases that are gonna happen in a few hours, so I wanna make sure I'm ready, I'm pre-scrubbed. So you can do a full-on scrub in the morning with these uh, sponges, and then later when it's surgery time, you can basically just use this gel right here. So this is the OR. That's where the C-sections go down. Um, and I'm usually standing right here on this side of the table, assisting with holding things open. Sometimes they let me suture. And I'm gonna try to get out of here before I get in trouble. So I ended up finding my attending, who after presenting and all that stuff, she loved it, that was all great. Um, set me on a little task to go across the street to the clinic to get these papers signed. Uh, so sometimes you end up doing this kind of stuff, unfortunately, but hopefully not for too long. Hopefully not for much longer. This document was not for that doctor to sign, and I'm probably gonna go back and be given another document for this guy, so I'll be back here. So another thing is once you've been at the hospital for a while, you know all, you know all the secret passageways to getting More importantly, outside. All right, lunch break. Let's go eat some nasty hospital food. <laughs> so lunch was disrupted. Uh, we got called in for emergency C-section and I really wanted to scrub in to see that. So I had to go see that and then I just had to eat whatever was in the nurse's lounge. And uh, then just did a couple deliveries and then basically done for the day. It can get really quiet in labor and delivery and then all of a sudden, a bunch of deliveries just start happening. So I take advantage of when it is quiet and uh, when my attending says, J just go home and say there's nothing going on, I get the hell out of there. Well guys, uh, ever since I turned the camera off, I... Someone doesn't know I'm vlogging. Hey, get out of my vlog. So since I stopped recording, I have gotten a haircut. Look kind of weird right now. Um, and came home and we're picking up beneath and now we're gonna go to the gym. So we've already got all of our Thanksgiving food and jeez, it is raining out here. So Thanksgiving is only a couple of days away, guys. I have a shelf exam once I'm done with that. It's just, it's just Thanksgiving time. 
all the families coming in. So usually, back in the day, we used to do, our family used to do the Thanksgiving dinners. Uh, but now, I don't know, it's just our family now. A lot of people uh, all went their separate ways, college, etc. Alright guys, so we're winding up for today and I'm super excited to be getting finished up with my OB-GYN rotation. So all that's left is at the end of every rotation you have to take a exam called the shelf exam. Finally have a little bit of vacation because they gave us Thursday, Friday off for um, Thanksgiving and Shaman and Benita are already here. This rotation has not been uh, my favorite. So every rotation is going to be great for different people and everyone's going to like what they like. Uh, but unfortunately, just ob -GYN, you know, I already knew I was probably not going to go into ob -GYN, um, and it was pretty much solidified um, after this rotation. So all that's left now is to cram for this exam coming up. I'll probably just spend today reading the ob -GYN sections in first aid and then tomorrow probably just cramming a bunch of practice questions and usually that's enough to get through a shelf. ob -GYN was just an interesting rotation. Usually I'm very comfortable. So if doctors pimp me, which is when they ask you questions that you should know, or supposedly should know. Um, I'm usually pretty good about it. Usually I know the answers. Usually I'm on top of it. I have some idea. I can give educated guesses. And I usually just get along with the doctors in the rotations I've been in. Psych, internal medicine, you know, I've totally just been comfortable with the whole scene and how everything works and what kind of questions I get asked. Um, ob I'm definitely fell out of my element. It's just, like I said, it's not something I'm really passionate about so I didn't really go and investigate and dive as deep as I could have on like I did with a lot of internal medicine topics like GI and pulmonary and cardiovascular uh, which I'm much more comfortable in um, so I was just out of my element to begin with um, so when I was getting pimped when I was getting asked, asked questions uh, I would say I got a good number of them right but like I said comparatively to internal medicine it's just I didn't know a lot of the stuff, uh, which already is um, unfortunate to start with. Um, and combine that with, for the first time, uh, encountering preceptors that were not the nicest. Uh, one in particular, uh, I think if any of my classmates are watching this, we all know who this is. I totally understand if you're trying to be this, you know, hot shot doctor walking around uh, like you're in an episode of Scrubs or or you know one of these shows on TV and and try to play the role there and try to be that person that just kind of instigates and, and and tries to you know keep students on their toes and stuff. I understand that. And then there's a there's a line that you cross when you just kind of become a bully. And I think that's where this one preceptor is kind of walking that line. Um, Cause a lot of it is not constructive. A lot of it is not helpful. A lot of it is not, um, and some of it is just blatantly saying shut up or you know kind of pushing students out of the way physically. Um, so I did not appreciate that. And that was an unfortunate part of uh, that rotation. I didn't get it as bad as some of my uh, peers got it. Um, Cause we're sometimes in rotation together. And uh, a lot of times we're separate, but on this rotation, I saw a good number of my classmates, like two or three of them together. And at one point uh, we're doing this surgery and um, only one of us is allowed to scrub in cause it's just a small um, operating room. And one usually is right up in the business scrubbed in while the other one observes. And it's, it's totally dead quiet. You know, the surgeons are working uh, totally open. I feel like any surgeon who has a student uh, at this point is, should totally be open to answering questions. So my classmate uh, takes advantage of this silent moment and it's something I totally would have done as well uh, to ask a question and the, immediately as he starts asking the question, he, I think he got like two words in and then she immediately was like, shut up like flat out and it I just feel like that's so I, I wasn't even the one that got told to shut up and I didn't appreciate it but uh, you know there's countless stories that let's so it's not like oh you know I'm just being a pansy because you know we're being told shut up once in a while it's like this is like constantly how this person interacts with students and you know it's kind of like a front like they're trying to be this kind of character to fill this role uh, when because when I was doing this surgery and I asked this preceptor like, oh, you know, was there a mistake that just happened? Because somebody was talking about a mistake. So I just asked her like, was there a mistake that just happened? And she said, um, did I say anything? And then I said, no, you, you didn't say anything. And she's like, then the mistake didn't happen. Do I look like a person that would keep my mouth closed? Like she's self-aware that she's playing this role. 
Um, and I just don't think if you know you're trying to play that role, I would just advise to understand that that's not helpful to students. If your students are scared or intimidated by you, or you know not asking questions, or or scared they should know something, it's not a good learning environment. It's just not. And, to, and I don't also think that this preceptor understands what level 30 medical students are. Um, and for a lot of you guys out there, uh, if you see a medical student in first, second, third, fourth year, I would even say residency, guys. Um, a lot of uh, first year residents, second year residents. Medicine is so deep. Medicine has so many levels that like even a first year resident relatively to someone that's been you know in the field and been a physician at like age 40 or something like that they don't know crap you don't really know shit as a first year resident even third year medical student like you don't know much there's no way in three years as a first year resident i'm going to come close to knowing even uh you know a fraction of the knowledge that these people have uh, i feel like this preceptor needs to understand what level their students are at and understand third year medical students probably shouldn't know um, why the uh, pressure on uh, uh, pneumoperitoneum has to be between 12 and 15 mmhgs like like you don't need to destroy a student's life <laughs> and insult them to hell if they didn't know that um, and if they ask a question about it, you know, it'd be helpful to understand, like, dude, these guys are fresh out of classrooms. They don't know what the hell's going on. They're just thrust into hospitals. It would be helpful to just ask some questions, uh, answer some questions for them. But uh, enough of that, what else? So in that first, first bit where I was in the office, I got pretty cool with some of my preceptors, one in specific. And um, she, she and I were like pretty, it was pretty cool. I was known as a medical student that would eat all her candy because it was around Halloween time and I was just always eating candy in her office. And you know, we were getting along great. And then we go to the surgery. Uh, I had my first surgery with her and uh, we're, we're, we're definitely joking around. She's like, oh, you know, I don't know if I want you in my uh, surgery, you're gonna mess me up, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it was very funny in the beginning. And then um, I go to scrub in and this is like my second, this is my second time ever scrubbing in. Um, and for OB-GYN uh, surgeries, you have to wear a mask with an eye shield. And I picked up the mask with the eye shield and I was just rushing to get into the room because she was set up. I had, uh, it, it's just a mess to know when to go in as a medical student, uh, before the surgeon, after the surgeon, give your stuff to the scrub tech. It's just a mess initially. Um, and you just kind of have to play with the timing. So I think I was behind and, and the surgeon was already scrubbed in. She was in there and I was just like, oh shit, I have to get in there. And I grabbed the mask, I put it on, I scrubbed in, I took all the time to scrub in, I ran in there, I gowned up, I put my gloves on, and we get ready for the surgery. And everything looks great, I'm super proud. I, I scrubbed in by myself, it, you know, it's complicated, it, it can be weird to glove, your, glove yourself and get scrubbed in, all that stuff. Um, so I'm all good, scrub tech is all good, everything's all good, because so scrub tech usually is the one that gets on you if you mess up. And everything's going great, and then, uh, I tell I'm with my I'm with my uh, friend who because uh, like I said there's one that scrubs in there's one that watches and I'm scrubbed in for this one so I uh, we're just bantering around you know waiting for the anesthesia to kick in and stuff like that so I look over to my friend and, and I'm like yeah doctor so and so the attending who's with us I'm like yeah she's really chill she's cool man yeah she, no she's she's really chill compared to some other one uh, preceptors I've had and. At that moment, I literally said, yo, this doctor is chill, like I'm cool with her, blah, blah, blah. We make jokes all the time. I'm literally saying this kind of stuff. And she looks over at me and she says, why do you have your uh, mask on backwards? And I was just like, oh, shit. Like, and she's like, I knew I didn't want you scrubbing. Get out of here and, uh, you know, switch your mask around and, and scrub in again. And, and I was just like, oh, shit. And like, she wasn't angry. She wasn't like horribly angry. But just after saying that she's super chill, I get kicked out by her for having my mask on backwards. It was just, oh, it was so ridiculous. I mean, everyone was laughing. We laughed it all off. But, um, yeah, that sucked. That was my second surgery. It's just, I got to do some pretty cool things as well. Like in hysterectomies, I got to get in there with the little uh, laparoscopic uh, little arms, little mechanical arms you can get in there and, and kind of uh, hold things for the doctor to cauterize. And, and so we got around and did a hysterectomy and pulled the uterus out and got to run a bunch of things like that. I didn't know, by the way, that you're awake for a C-section. Just FYI, I don't, I don't know how I missed that. I don't know how I didn't know it was just an epidural, but yeah, so if you're looking forward to a C-section, it's still kind of, you feel kind of nauseous and weird and stuff like that. It's definitely less pain probably than pushing a baby out, but 
just something to be aware of that there's like this little sheet and if you literally just take the sheet down it's just kind of weird to think about if you're a woman laying there if you take the sheet down like everything's just open there's like a baby being pulled out of you and stuff i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you guys so much for tuning in as always i love reading you guys' comments i love interacting with you guys you guys are really really awesome and nice uh every time i go down in the comments just, you guys are super nice super cool and i'd love to answer any questions or you know just talk about stuff so make sure you guys leave a comment and subscribe and come back for more content and make sure you guys have a great happy safe thanksgiving and the rest of these holidays um it's my favorite time of the year i can't wait to just relax it's already raining outside it's cold i just i love it so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one